Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking features delicious recipes and cooking tips from the Gulf Coast's finest chefs and restaurants. Watch as popular local chefs prepare their special dishes with natural gas. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. My guest today is Executive Chef Blake Rushing, who along with his partner, Patrick Bolster, are the owners of the Union Public House, one of yep. Pensacola's newest restaurants. So good to have you. Glad to be here. We have got so much to talk about at the new restaurant, and um, we've got a lot of your great dishes to prepare. So oh, yeah. tell everyone what we'll be preparing today. So here are a couple of signature dishes um, from Union. We've got a uh, rainbow trout BLT, and I'll show you how we come to that uh, BLT name here in a second. It's a uh, main course. We use a nice Georgia rainbow trout. Uh, we've got a, a local purple kale salad from Durden Farms um, with a cured soy egg, uh, some sunflower seeds, golden raisins, and a peppercorn vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our signature boiled peanuts that uh, we kind of make even more southern than they already are. <laughs> Great. And we'll get started with our trout dish. Yep. You so, can always expect something different from Blake, Always. Right? Don't want to get boring. No, absolutely not. So for the rainbow trout, we've got a, a nice Georgia rainbow trout. Um, skin on. I love the skin. It's nice and crispy. Um, we're going to uh, have a medium-high heat pan, a little bit of olive oil. And then we want to do a little bit of salt. This is and a very coarse pepper. salt, huh? Yeah, it's the Malden sea salt. It comes from um, the coast of England. Mm. Really nice, nice flakes, nice flavor. So you want your oil to be sh just shimmering, not too, too hot. Now you'll, you'll finish this in the oven. Yes. You're just so going to let it brown the first get the, time. Uh, the skin crispy and then throw it in the oven to finish about 375. Mm -hmm. um, just let it cook right through. Okay. Um, the BLT part of it comes from, we've got a uh, copa. We, co we cure all our own uh, meat in house. And mm -hmm. so this is the pork shoulder we cure for about two months. Um, so that's the bacon part of it. Um, then we've got our tomatoes, both thinly sliced green and then cherry. Uh, the bib lettuce. And we also do some fingerling potatoes on there. And then the toast part of it, We've got uh, little garlic croutons, so. Great. While that's searing off, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to make the, uh, the dressing. The dressing. Okay. It's a, a nice creamy dressing. It's made with um, part mayonnaise, part yogurt. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some fresh dill, parsley, lemon juice, garlic, and a little red onion. Oh. So it adds a little tartness to it. Mm -hmm. You've only been open, well, at the time of this airing, about two months. Right. And um, I have heard wonderful things, Blake. It's been awesome. We've been slammed and we are having a ball. I bet. And you know, both you and Patrick, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, you bring different things to the table, which really enhance and complement. Yeah, we both other. have our own role for sure. I mean, I'm pretty good cooking and uh, he's amazing doing uh, all the craft cocktails and right. all that kind of thing. He just, right. it's, he's really mm -hmm. had a huge influence on uh, Pensacola in the, in the cocktail scene. It's been a good marriage, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> My work wife. <laughs> That's right. The so mayonnaise goes into the herbs. With, yeah, so um, we've got our herbs, yogurt. mayonnaise, shallot. I mean, sorry, red onion. Uh-huh. Just mix that together. It's kind of a loose dressing. Mm -hmm. You're going to do a clove of garlic. Give it a little bit of a bite. This is a different take on the BLT, isn't Yeah, it? this is kind of like your mayonnaise on the bread. Mm-hmm. So all the components today are just a little bit different. Right. Nice light dish, too, coming in the spring. Mm hmm And just a little squeeze of lemon. Check our trout over here. It is sizzling away, isn't it? Yep. You'll see it'll release on its own. Uh-huh. You don't want the skin to stick. There we oh, go. That a nice golden perfect. brown. Uh -huh. Let's take a little more crispy on that side, and then we'll toss it in the oven for about four to five minutes. Okay. All right, so that's our ready. dressing. Don't forget a little salt, a little pepper. Like that. How would you describe your food? Like um, we've been kind of southern with a little bit of a twist on it. Mm -hmm. We kind of call ourselves the crafty southern pub because we do like craft artisan cured meats, um, craft cocktails, 
all, all the different crafty mm -hmm. style things. And so that's what we're, we've been going for. Mm -hmm. Kind of taking a dish that we like and then putting like a nice little southern twist on it. Makes it so unique. Oh yeah, it? it's been fun. A lot of fun. All right, so that's all brown and crispy. So that's gonna cook about five minutes and uh, we're gonna start plating while that's uh, finishing up. Okay. Um, so the tomato part of it, we've got some nice thinly sliced green tomatoes. Just gonna mm -hmm. layer that around the uh, plate. Just nice paper thin slices. Much firmer than the red tomato. Oh yeah, I, you, I don't know if you could do this that well with the green, or red mm -hmm. tomato. All right. I don't think you'd do it that thin. <laughs> Almost like a tomato carpaccio. It is. And then we've got some uh, bib lettuce here. Mm -hmm. Just gonna lay those in the middle. About three slices. Next we have our uh, blanched potatoes. They've been cooked with a little bit of chili flake and uh, fennel seed. We're gonna make like a little potato salad, fingerling potato salad with our dressing. Tell us about your dressing. That's our uh, one we just made with the shallots, dill, lemon juice, garlic. All right, now we're gonna grab our trout. It certainly smells nice good. And crispy. Oh. So to look finish at up that. the dish, get our nice fish spatula here. Place your trout right in the center, over the top of that nice potato salad. Garnish with a couple of these little red cherry tomatoes. And then we've got our house cured copa, which is the bacon part mm -hmm. of the BLT. This is uh, cured from the pork shoulder. Blake, this is amazing. Thank you. And then we've got our, our really? toast part of the BLT, little garlic croutons. Finish it up with a touch of mold and salt, and you're good to go. So creative, look at that. Our first dish from the Union Public House, beautiful. Before we go to break, tell everyone how you came up with the name Union Public House. Well, Patrick came to me a while back and uh, had all, has talked about being opening a pub. And I just, living in London for two and a half years, pubs have been my favorite. Mm -hmm. I just always wanted to be in part of a pub. And so when he came to me, I was, I was really excited. He said we were talking about making it the Union. Um, and uh, basically a union of the community, bringing every walk of oh, life in, uh -huh. um, every demographic, and just like a place where it all comes together. Um, and so uh, it also goes to our staff. It's, a, it's a, not kind of a, a front of the house and back of the house. We want it to be a union of all the staff and all of our, our staff family. Well, I think you're accomplishing that. Doing, working hard at it. Well, great. <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break. When we get back, we'll have our second dish from Blake Rushing. We'll be right back. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer. And you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. We have noticed using the natural gas, our power bills have been a lot lower. Our last home was all electric, and now that we've built this house with natural gas, we won't ever consider going back to electric. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Heating water with electricity versus natural gas can cost twice as much. And tankless natural gas water heaters can add even more savings. So don't get soaked with higher energy costs. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. A special kale salad is next. Yep, this has been a really popular item. We've got some uh, beautiful purple kale from Floribama Farms. Well, Floribama is the one who finds the awesome local producers. Uh, it's from Durden Farms in Somerdale. Um, so we've got our kale salad that's on the menu. Mm -hmm. uh, over here we've got a egg soft boiled. So it's uh, boiling water, a little bit of vinegar and salt for six minutes and 45 seconds exactly. Um, pop that little guy out and go right into an ice bath. And this basically helps it um, cool down quickly. You're stopping the carryover cooking mm -hmm. and you've got an exact cook wow. time all the time. Okay. Um, so. To make a soy cured egg, which is the topper of the salad, we've got some soy sauce, a little bit of sugar, about two tablespoons to a cup of soy sauce, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add a touch of water, warm water. So this egg is going to have a soy taste. Right, yeah. It's, it's, it's a beautiful color. You sit it for about six, um, 
six hours in the soy mixture, oh, okay. and it starts to actually cure and uh, season the outside of the egg, the egg white. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to pull it out after those six hours, otherwise it'll start to cook the yolk from the salt. Oh, okay. And sugar. Can you store these in the refrigerator? Oh yeah, for okay. sure. After six hours, pop them out, mm -hmm. and uh, you basically just leave them on a nice little tray. So. This is going to be a great addition to this salad. It's a really nice flavor. What have, what have people's reactions been? Oh, people have been loving the, loving the restaurant, loving all the food, all the little twists on everything. Mm -hmm. And you make some great scotch eggs. Oh, yeah. We've actually sold about over a thousand to date. Have you? In um, two months? It's wild. They're, uh, it's basically a soft boiled egg, kind of like this. Uh -huh. um, and then we pop them out and make our own house made andouille, um, pack that down, wrap it around the egg. And then instead of having um, the classic breading, we wanted to make it even more southern. Uh -huh. So we just um, uh, make uh, cracklins into crumbs, like the size of oh. breadcrumbs in a food processor. And so we bread it with cracklin breadcrumbs. So not only is it gluten free and paleo, but it's, wow. uh, it's, it's made with uh, cracklins on the outside as well and it's fry them. It's such a different take for an egg. Hard boiled oh, egg, yeah. isn't it? Makes it pretty awesome. And you sold a thousand? <laughs> Over a thousand. Wow. <laughs> That's the biggest seller. Um, like I said, this beautiful purple kale it is from uh, Durden Farms just got in yesterday. Um, and uh, we basically want to just break off that nice stem right there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to dress the salad before we do anything else so it starts to break down the kale a touch. That's important, isn't it? Kale mm -hmm. can be very tough. It can. And it, um, You kind of want to rip it up just a little bit, nice little small chunks. And even yeah. marinating it somewhere. But it's not, it's not too, too rough. Mm -hmm. This is a much softer kale as well. It looks more tender than your typical uh, right. green kale. Remember when it used to just be a garnish <laughs> on, the, on a plate? No one touched it. Right. And now it's the big superfood. Kale is king. <laughs> um, so here we just have a little uh, peppercorn yogurt vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit. It's kind of like the dressing we made earlier. Yogurt, um, Greek yogurt, mayonnaise, um, lots of peppercorns, some red wine vinegar, olive oil. And you want to dress this like you would a Caesar salad, like a little bit on the heavier side. Okay. And that we're just going to toss with a little bit of salt. Not too much, just a touch. Mm -hmm. Finishing salt's a great thing to have in your kitchen. It's just one of those things you'd eat right. It's got a nice flake, nice crunch to it. It's um, pretty too. It's kind of oh a yeah. coarse. They grow in little salt. pyramid shapes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we'll dress that like that. And so that'll start to break down and kind of soften up the kale. Okay. We've got several other components oh, to yeah. this dish. So along with our soy cured egg, which we have here, one that's already done, soaked uh -huh. for six hours, um, we've got uh, cauliflower, which we uh, basically blanched with some fennel seed, coriander seed, peppercorn, and some curry powder, made it kind of bright yellow. Um, we're actually going to torch that. This is a map torch, map gas. It's a much higher heat burning, and it's okay. also um, it's flavorless, unlike propane. Okay. So this just gives it a nice charred, charred flavor. Now, Blake, not everyone's going to have one of those at home. Is there anything else you can do? You could totally put it under the broiler in right. the oven. That would, that would work fine. Maybe brush it with a touch of olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, all right. And then we also have our sunflower seeds and golden raisins. Mm -hmm. um, adds a nice salty crunch and then also a nice sweetness to it. Um, so to dress our salad, basically we take the kale, place that in the center. Look how pretty that is with the dressing, even. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Uh -huh. All right. And then we'll take our nice charred pieces of cauliflower. I like to put a little bit of salt on those to get a little nice little crunch of that Malden salt. This salad, the colors are going to pop. <laughs> And then we've got our golden raisins and sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. Some crunch. Yeah. Sweetness. You've got it all in this salad. People love this. 
All right, and then we've got our soy egg, and if, if we did it right, this will cut open and be perfect soft yolk in the middle. There we go. Perfect. So here's our soy cured egg. You can see how the soy started to uh -huh. go around the outside and cure on the inside. And then the yolk will be nice on there. Finish that with a touch of a tiny bit of salt, a little cracked pepper. Another beautiful and unique dish. Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Blake, we were talking earlier, uh, you really believe in shopping local. Yeah, it's, don't you? it's important. I'd rather go local than go <laughs> anything else. Mm -hmm. It's just so cool to get something that is that pretty from just down the street. And you know, pretty soon you can just go outside the restaurant and pick whatever you want, right? Yeah, actually, um, we planted uh, a couple of Meyer lemon trees, pear trees, um, peach trees. Um, and the Meyer lemon trees have blown up. I mean, there's so many blossoms on there, we're gonna have like 80 lemons. Um, mm. But uh, also my sous chef's big into, uh, Eric Pomerning is really super big into gardening. And so we've got a plot in the back for him. He's already got a habanero plant going and we've got tomatoes, peppers, herbs all started up. So we're excited. Wow. In your own herb garden, I love that. Yeah. You know, go out and talk about fresh, uh -huh. right <laughs> off the plant, right up the stem. You don't ever run out. <laughs> that's right. But that's just part of your outdoor dining. You've got great indoor dining. Right. We'll talk about that too. But your outdoor, you've got a lot of things planned. Yeah, that's coming real soon. We've got, I mean, in the next in the next week or so, um, we've got 60 seats outside on a big patio. Um, we've just got a bocce ball court and horseshoes uh, court in, in uh, installed. Um, so that'll be a really good time. We've got uh, cornhole and then uh, it was funny, Patrick and I were pulling a pole out of the ground during construction and we were uh -huh. joking about uh, tetherball. We haven't played that oh, since well, high there school. You go. <laughs> and so we started laughing and we said, all right, we've got to do that. So we just ordered the tetherball <laughs> and so, to play as well. You're going to have to have more yard around that yeah, restaurant exactly. if you keep expanding your games. <laughs> well, that's wonderful though. It gives, it, it's all about the union, right? It's all, people, yep. people eating together, drinking together and playing together. In a great atmosphere. <laughs> that is wonderful. We're going to take another break because we've got our last dish. Oh, yeah. Special boiled peanuts. Your Blake's special boiled peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> Very popular with the restaurant, so we'll start that right after this. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. The tankless hot water heater is the biggest value that we've seen. Never running out of hot water is great. We had family in town over the holiday, and not one time do we ever run out of hot water. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. Natural gas has been great. Um, the difference between cooking on electric and natural gas has been amazing. I really didn't think I would notice that much of a difference, but I really have. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Like your famous peanuts are next. Yep, the uh, boiled peanuts, we do them a little different. I actually cook them like I would um, crawfish. So it's not just salty boiled peanuts. It's um, We start off with just raw peanuts like you always would. Mm -hmm. um, basically cover them in water. Um, then I put a lot, lots and lots of uh, Old Bay. It's delicious and that's kind of like that seafood boil mm -hmm. almost. So, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty good amount. Um, I would suggest probably doing these in a crock pot it does take about 48 hours to cook. Oh, okay. Um, raw peanuts take a long time to get nice and soft. Um, then I'll throw in a couple heads of garlic. Nice fresh garlic in there. Mm -hmm. Some lemon. 48 hours? Yeah, it takes a while. We, we have a big pot on the back of the stove at Union that goes for 48 hours. I'm gonna go through about two of those a, a, a week. 
they're popular up My there. Goodness. But basically, you just get everything in, go in there uh -huh. and you just let them tick away. Um, but yeah, a crock pot at home would probably be the best bet. Okay. Set on medium or high. Mm -hmm. And then basically to serve them, we just uh, have all the cooking liquor in there with it. Throw on a wedge or two of lemon. Look squeeze at that. on there. You just happen to have one. I sure do. Ready to go for you. Open for me. Let's try these. Oh my goodness. Tasty, huh? They are very tasty. Delicious. Just like You know what well. would be perfect with this? A craft cocktail. Well, how about we go see Patrick down at the Union? Shall we? Let's do it. Okay. And by the magic of TV, here we are at Union Public House and one, at one of the most popular spots in the restaurant, the bar. Yes. And joining us now is co-owner Patrick Bolster, and uh, you are going to work some of your magic with one of your most popular cocktails. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is the uh, Saddler cocktail. Um, this was made originally as a tribute to Pensacola in general. Um, it has each ingredient represents a uh, one of the flags. You have uh, obviously Spain was the original settlement, so you have sherry. You had France, uh, France that had some influence, so you have Saint Germain, it's an elderflower liqueur. Um, uh, Britain had some influence as well, so you have gin. Then you have some fresh citrus that would be from the south or the Confederate flag. And then the, uh, the last component that makes this drink is the uh, American flag, which is also the bartender who makes the drink. So the bartender is actually, you know, or bartending is one thing that America has given to the Culinary Institute uh, as you know, part of influence. Uh, the, the pub came from Europe originally, but we actually pioneered bartending. So that's the last little twist for this cocktail. So it has a little bit of bitters from, uh, from the uh, tropics. So it's gave it a nice little spice care. It gives it, gives it, actually makes it a cocktail. Cause like we talked about before, what makes a real cocktail is you have to have essential components. You have to have your spirit. You have to have sugar. You have to have bitters, which bitter, anything that has like a bitter uh, root or spice to kind of amplify some flavors mm -hmm. and then you have to have water be it ice or dilution from ice so so without those four components it's not a cocktail you can't actually call it a cocktail okay. so your your everyday jack and coke or a, a vodka and soda is not actually a cocktail without bitters okay. so Perfect. so our bitters in here finish the thing add some spice to it uh, the drink has a nice nuttiness from the sherry it's a it's an amontillado sherry so it'll go with a lot of the things we have on the menu. In fact, it'll literally go with everything on the menu, things that are spicy, things that have a good fat content from the protein, or things that just have a good spice profile in general. Uh, this drink goes with everything, so. Okay. So should we make one up? All right, so the first thing we do is we always like to chill our glass first. A little nugget ice helps us chill a lot quicker than usual. Just kind of set that thing aside. Um, first thing we'll do is add a little gin. It's a pretty easy one to make at the house too because all you need to do is do equal parts everything. So this is a Saint Germain liqueur. It's elderflower and elderberries. Really pretty bottle, pretty label. Real aromatic, got this nice little oily fruit note to it. This is the uh, sherry from Lusteau. It's an Amontillado. As long as you have a, a medium dry sherry and as long as it's Amontillado because it has that nuttiness you're looking for, that's what you want. Um, it's the fresh lemon juice. Again, just all equal parts. Makes it real easy to recreate at your house. And just a good heavy dash of Angus Road bitters. And then this is the water. Um, shaking it is real crucial with your citrus because you want to add some oxygen to your citrus so it doesn't be so bright and dominate the rest of the flavors in the drink. So we'll just check it out. It's usually what gets the crowd going right here. Here's, um, we're shaking. The key thing with shaking is making sure that you're shaking it hard and consistent. Um, the time is going to be all dependent on what type of ice you have. Um, obviously, like the ice we use to chill this glass has a lot less surface area or a lot less volume to surface area, so it's going to melt faster, so that's where we want to chill things. But if you have larger ice cubes, um, and also a fine strainer right there. Um, so if you have a larger ice cube, when you shake it, you actually need to shake a little bit longer to help break things up okay. in order to get your dilution and your chilling that you need to get properly done. Back down. 
magic of television. <laughs> you can do a flame orange zest, which literally just takes the oils and you can ignite it, give it a nice pretty show at night, but it's hard to see in this daytime anyways. But the idea is to get a nice little orange oil on the top. So when you smell the glass first, it gives you this nice fresh like component to the drink. So put that little orange peel in there. That's how it would be served oh, at the bar. That. And that's the settler. That's the settler. And you, Patrick, are known as the cocktail guru of Pensacola. And you come up with all the drinks here that um, you create yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, do you try them out on guests? And Always got to try them out on guests. I mean, a, a lot of what I do are based on classics and, and things right. that have been around for hundreds of years. And it's funny that, you know, you have certain drinks that have reputations for, um, for being known to be made a certain way. Uh -huh. And then when you explain to certain crowds that you have, you know, a, an actual reference material to show like this recipe went back to the 1800s or wow. um, like the original cocktail by definition was in the late 1800s in a uh, print article in the Northeast that it gave that exact definition that I gave you, cocktail by definition, bitter, spirits, water, sugar. And uh, so it's, it's fun to kind of give a little history lesson with each drink, sure. and, and that's why this drink is real special to me, because it has a story behind it, and they taste better when they have a better story, too. Absolutely. So. Well, there's so much to learn. Mm -hmm. Something to learn there? every single day. It sure is. You know, cocktails are one thing that, you know, like I said, we've had great wine and great, great beer in this town, mm -hmm. but cocktails are one of those things where it, it, really, it really needs a lot more training to build a flavor and balance a flavor, whereas you're pouring a glass of wine, it's already built in, or you're pouring it off a tap or giving a bottle, it's already built in. So to make involved. it totally. So in, in not just mm -hmm. having one person make it. If I was the only bartender back here, that'd be one thing, because all the drinks would come out exactly the same. Right. But we have multiple bartenders, and you have to train everybody. Everybody has to get on the same page to learn that balance of sweet, sour, bitter, savory, umami, all that good stuff. So. Well, this is, I can't wait to try this, but we're going to give everyone our telephone number for Blake's Recipes. If you would like copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy, 436-5050, or you can visit our website, www.coastalcooking.com. Gentlemen, this has been wonderful, and I'm so glad time. we got to visit the restaurant and yeah, meet well, Patrick. And we want everyone to know your hours and where you're located. Yep, we're on 309 South Roo Street, across from City Hall next to the baseball park. Mm -hmm. We're open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to Til until whenever. Yeah. Til whenever. Sort of, uh, til, food til late, late. leave, yeah. And uh, starting Saturday, we'll be opening for uh, Saturday brunch, 10 a.m. Tell us about oh, yeah. your Saturday brunch. Oh, we'll have a, six or seven brunch items, and it'll be open at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Perfect. Um, Sunday's for our families, but Saturday okay. we're going to start the brunch thing. Very yeah. nice. Informal dining inside and outside dining is coming. Yeah. Yep, yeah, right? we're real close to that. Soon just soon. got the lighting in today, so perfect. So be nice. Well, I think you all have created just a wonderful place with a lot of ambiance, good food, and great cocktails and drinks. Thank you, thank Thanks. you. So we are glad to have you in Pensacola. Glad so to be thank here. Thank you all for, for joining me today. Thank you. Thank and you. we hope you'll join us next week. I'll be back with more coastal cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.